Welcome to this week's edition of ONW Now. Today we're talking about ONW science scholars and promposals. For Ashley Couch, I'm Isabel Lobby, and this is ONW Now. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Before spring break, ONW science scholars competed in the Greater Kansas City Science and Engineering Fair. Reed and Drake have the details. I was really interested in doing research and this is the first time the school has really offered a program that lets us get into a lab outside of school and be a part of the research experience. Science Scholars, a new program in the Northwest, traveled to Kansas City last month to compete in the Science Pioneers competition. The new program is allowing students to use what they've learned in the classroom in a science lab. This was a really great opportunity to really ap apply all the knowledge that I had learned in class to solve a problem. For their first time competing, the students show that they are able to be competitive with other schools. I won a gold award for my project, which was really great because I spent many hours in Lawrence working on it and it, all my work paid off. If you are interested in becoming a member of the Science Scholars, contact Mrs. Rippey or Mrs. O'Gorman. For ONW Now, I'm Drake Watkins. Back to the desk. Blood cancer is the second leading cause of death by cancer in the United States. Allison has more on how you can be a lifesaver by donating. On April 14th, ONW will be hosting their second annual bone marrow drive. What most people don't understand is that the drive is only the registration. Ms. Rippey explains this process. Just realize what, what everybody is doing on, on April 14th is just registering, okay? All that really is is a quick swab. They swab one side, they swab for the other, they put it in an envelope, fill out a registration form, and that's all Monday. That's all our drive entails. One of ONW's own alumni received the chance to save someone's life. Nick Yarber explains his experience. The, the actual procedure was just having uh, a needle in each arm, blood going out the left arm, going through a machine, and then putting it back through the right arm, so it was painless. He was flown to Denver and then to California to donate bone marrow. His trip was completely paid for, and the experience changed his life. Having that feeling is pretty hard to describe. Uh, it's hard to put words on it, but it's, it's probably the most amazing experience I've ever had in my entire life. There are many misconceptions about donating bone marrow, such as not being able to play sports after. Nick plays baseball in college and shares how it affected him. No, it didn't affect playing baseball at all. Uh, I just let my coach know that I was going to be gone for one day of practice, and then I missed that day of practice. There was no problems, and the day I got back, I was practicing the next day, so it didn't affect anything. Remember, the bone marrow drive is only registering and not actually donating. Ms. Rippey explains how to sign up for it. Just go on to the, to the school webpage and you'll see the link. Click on it, sign up, bam, you're done. It will only take 15 minutes of your day to participate and you must be at least 18 years old to register. Make sure to spread the word around the community. For ONW Now, I'm Allison Cook. The theater department is excited to present its first musical directed by a student. Let's take it to Brady for an inside look at the upcoming play. Mine in the Winter is the first self-directed play at um, ONW. It's all student-based. We went to Mrs. Murphy and we asked to do it ourselves. And so it's kind of like our own project and we're getting a grade for it, but we're also dedicated to the play. Before there was Game of Thrones, there was The Lion in Winter. A group of theater students fell in love with the true story of Henry II and decided to take it on themselves. Since it was the first student-led production at ONW, they wanted to make sure it was something worthwhile. So there's a lot of lying, a lot of manipulating, a lot of backstabbing, going behind people's backs, really mean words get said. They all hate each other, basically. I have been vilified enough. I have had enough of it. You brought the cutlery down here. Do not tell me you did not have this in mind. I tell you, I did not have this in mind. Swear on something. I'm a god to hear what you consider holy. And they just really wanted to do it as a collaborative thing, and they asked me to direct it, and it's, it's a really powerful story, and we really want to share it with everybody. Cool. Make sure you go see The Lion and Winter this Thursday and Friday at 7. The tickets are $5. For ONW Now, I'm Brady Armstrong. Four Northwest seniors have started their own clothing line. Chloe Cowart has more. Seniors Dominic Fabiano, Easton Cook, Queston Bradley, and Brian Goins are making their dreams into a reality by creating their own clothing line called Dachi. You may have seen Dachi around the halls. 
I guess one of our friends that passed is really the inspiration behind why we did it, I guess. Inspiration for the creation of Dachi came from a truly special person who impacted their lives. He was really like fashion forward and always had these like cool ideas. So a lot of his ideas were really our ideas when we made it. The boys combined Jalen's influence with their creativity to produce this inspiring line. Uh, he always had the dream to work in Paris, design clothes, do all of that. Isolation is inspiration is one of their many unique designs. And um, especially Jalen, Jalen really liked, you know, his space and he thought like clearly he was like really deep into like his emotions and thoughts and stuff alone. So we just wanted kind of to express that with the clothing. Seeing their ideas come to life gives the boys the confidence that they need to create more inspiring looks. Uh, like, yeah, that's our stuff. That's really like a good feeling, knowing that people like what we make and what we design. I think it's cool to see like that other people are interested in what something that you made. Dachi's launch party is this Friday at 5 p.m. at Westside Story in Kansas City. Admission is free. They look forward to seeing many Ravens there to support them. Now it is time for a special Game Day Northwest. Welcome to a special edition of Game Day Northwest. My name is Joe Kaliga. Today we got a back and forth between Tom Mitchell and Parker Thompson. Pardon the interruption. Here we go, guys. First topic is going to be the Kansas teams this year in the March Madness Tournament. What happened this year, guys? Well, Kansas came into the tournament with high hopes. Think they're going to make a championship run, possibly against, uh, possibly against a Wichita State team who also exited the tournament early in the first weekend. I think that those two teams had very high expectations. I think the K-State loss, not as shocking, you know. Uh, still a good team, <laughs> but a tough draw coming up against Kentucky, you know. That's that's a tough draw for anyone. Yeah, but I will say, though, that Kentucky win against Wichita State did not surprise me one bit. I thought they were going to win from the be very beginning. I had them winning in my bracket as well. Well, you know, K KU is a hurt, hurt team, you know. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, four points at, without Embiid, you know. Wichita State, good team. Got Van Vliet missed the three-point at the buzzer, but who's who's the best team in Kansas? Kansas Jayhawks, no doubt. They have won 10 straight championships in the Big 12. I respect the opinion, but I, I'm going to have to go against my Jayhawks. I'm going to have to say the Shockers. You know, outstanding record, 35-1. and one. I, don't, I don't think any other team Their competition this year was horrendous. I, will, I know that's very cliche to say, but I will say that their competition was awful. They did still go Shockers. They played Indiana State. Two seconds, guys. Time's up. All right, next up, we got the one and dones this year in the tournament. Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, all those lottery picks. What do you guys think about them this year in the tournament? You know, I'm going to have to go with saying that Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, they should both be leaving the, leaving the NCAA this year. I think it's hard to leave with such terrible games. Jabari for 4 for 14 with a loss against Mercer. You know, Andrew Wiggins, that, 4 points. That doesn't mean I, anything. Look, these players that have left the, the college or not even gone to college have succeeded so well in the NBA. I think you Kobe make, Bryant, you, Kevin Garnett, LeBron James. You can make a case for both sides. You know, uh, Marcus Smart, his draft stock a little bit hurt by returning for another year. You know, Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, three years at North Carolina. No. No, no. Marcus Smart, the reason why he went down is because of this great com the great competition that went into the NCAA. I think, I think we, another player, uh, Olathe Northwest Raven, we got Willie Cauley-Stein, benefited greatly from coming back. And I, th I think he may even return another year and do, do work for Kentucky. He's supposed to go in the lottery. There's no way he's going he's gonna to pass up millions again. He he's he's coming back. He's year. coming he's, back. There's no way. All right, guys. We'll see. Time's up. Next up, we got uh, our championship game. Uh, who do you guys got this year in the NCAA tournament? You know, I like the Kentucky Wildcats. I think I think they're peaking at the right time. They're playing at a very high level of play, different than they you know, did I'm a couple weeks right there. ago. I'm going to stop you right here. Even though they're playing at a very high level right now, they're going to be going up against a Florida Gator team that is full of seniors that have been red hot. Scotty Wilbekin going to games late, finishing the game, finishing the team. Okay, I, I, li I, I like where you're where you're coming from with the leadership piece, but but Julius Randle is just too no. too dominant no. of the player. See, to they, let they'll Florida match win. him up with Patrick Young, who is so strong. He's he's been there for four years, getting stronger each and every year, getting better. Julius Randle gets a tight matchup inside, that's, kick it out to the Harrison twins. That kick <laughs> all day. I guarantee you, Scotty Wilbekin, he's come. He has had the team overcome so many challenges in the year. He will not let them lose to a Kentucky team who's getting a late run. In the year. They're, get, they're getting. They're, they've had good players all year. They just haven't clicked until right now. I think they're clicking. They beat three of the la of last year's Final Four teams. That, that, that's a different that's team, though. That's a different team. All good teams. Don't tell me that Wichita State isn't a good team. <laughs> I told you earlier that they don't have. Whatever. That's that's time for now. 
you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see pretty soon here. Alrighty. Thanks for joining us today. This was another edition of Game Day Northwest. Pardon the interruption. I got Tom Mitchell, Parker Thompson next to me. I'll see you next time, guys. I'm here with Miss Noteboom, who's involved in Healthy Ravens Week that's going to be going on next week. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, Healthy Ravings Week, the whole point of the, the week is for us to have students come out to the lunch tables and to pledge to do something healthy. So an example would be maybe not drinking pop for the week or maybe eating fruits and vegetables for the week or even it could be not using your cell phone and just talking with your friends at lunch. So what we've decided is that each day of the week is going to be a different category. So Monday is going to be healthy eating. Um, Tuesday is going to be support your Ravens, support an event, so going on out to either the soccer, soccer games, the baseball games, or the um, softball. Um, Wednesday is going to be count your steps, where students are going to have a competition where they can walk from possibly the event entrance to maybe like the English pod, count their steps and put it into a drawing to see what they could win. Um, Thursday is going to be unplug from electronics where you're actually going to be, it's going to be 54 minutes no phone zone. So you actually during passing periods don't use your phone as well as at lunch which actually equals out to 54 minutes. And then on Friday we're going to do an all school happy dance from the song Happy. Uh, we're going to be taping throughout the week and throughout the day. During lunch we'll have cameras at the lunch for kids to come up and be able to do their own dance. And then at the end of the day we'll actually show our own Olathe Northwest happy dance video. Okay. Um, you mentioned some of the prizes next week. Could you tell us what those are will be? Sure. Um, one of the prizes is if you come on the very first Monday, if you come, the first 25 students will draw names, and then they'll get this game day t-shirt. Game day, and then it's a black and blue attack. Um, also, if they come on Tuesday to support their events, so if they come to ODAC and they do the softball games, then they'll be able to be double entered into a drawing. And if they come to the baseball or if they come to the soccer, they'll be double entered into a drawing and they'll get a t-shirt. So anyone who comes to the games will get this t-shirt. They'll be able to go ahead and make a pledge and then they'll be able to be entered into a drawing. And the, the, the grand prize drawings that we're going to have are we're going to have two memberships to Healthridge Fitness Center. So it'll be a summer um, Healthridge for three months in the summer and we'll announce those on Friday after at the very end of the day. So two Ravens, each time you pledge, anytime you come out to the game, you'll be entered double, but the two grand prizes to Healthridge Summer Pass. Okay, well, thanks for much, so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Prom is less than a month away and that means it's time to find a date. Hey Ravens, April 26th is nearing, which means prom, which also means you need a date. Record or take a picture of your prom proposal and email it to Ms. Freeman at jfreeman at olathaschools.org for a chance to win a prize such as a tablet. There will also be prizes for the best prom entrance, so arrive in style. Entrances will be from 7.30 to 8.30. Steve Serrano will be DJing and there will be a photographer for the photo booth. Hope to see all you Ravens there. That's all we have for you today. For Isabel Lobby, I'm Ashley Couch. Have a great week, Ravens.